Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we are out riding the classiest version of the Honda Mini Moto Fleet, the Honda Super Cub, or C125 as some of you may refer to it. To those sporty boys watching our channel, you may not be super interested in this bike, but I am, because it packs the same 125cc single cylinder motor that is in the Grom, the Monkey, and the Trail 125 into a very sleek, I don't know what goes far as to say sexy, but uh, attractive, very metropolitan package, and a pretty unique semi-manual. This is a clutchless four-speed manual transmission. I'm, I'm just really curious to try it out. I really am. Not only that, but this vehicle, believe it or not, is the best-selling vehicle in the world. <laughs> this They've sold more Honda Super Cubs, or Cubs, Super Cubs, whatever, than any other motorcycle and any other car in the world. It's really darn impressive. This thing is ubiquitous and it should be pretty darn approachable. I'm pretty excited to try it out. We're out riding the entire Honda Mini Moto fleet here in Torrance, California. And so check the link in the description for reviews on the other Mini Motos as well as a lineup of kind of which Mini Moto bike should you buy. So without any further ado, let's get into it. We do have anti-lock brakes, which is something I am very passionate about with motorcycling. I think it's very important. In fact, it's actually anti-lock brake. It's just the front brake, but on a small bike like this, it's about all you need. You see this cool looking exhaust pipe coming out right here. Everything looking really nice and quality. I'm looking forward to giving this thing a spin. I am a bit disappointed in the lack of storage on a bike like this. I feel like someone riding something might at least want uh, to be able to put some things in here, but unfortunately under the seat all you have is the fuel tank. I just feel like they could have gotten creative with something. I mean, maybe just even a little storage box or container. I know it wouldn't look as cool, but add some practicality, would you? But this big old single person seat, I guess that's another downside is there's no passenger area on this bike. This is simply a one person uh, machine. Let me get my gloves on, we'll fire it up. Of course, these little Honda single cylinder bikes provide excellent fuel economy. So you could run one of these around and it doesn't matter what gas prices are because you can just throw some 87 octane in here and get hundreds of miles of, per gallon, I'm sure. And my grandma was able to get well over 100 even riding that aggressively. Proximity key on the spike. Let me show you real quick, even though I'm riding my gloves on. This is the key. So you just keep this in your pocket, your purse, your backpack, whatever. Walk up to the bike, turn the key down there, fuel pump comes on because it is fuel injected. Also, no no side stand. It's just a center stand, so no kickstand off the side. You just pull it down. Feels pretty light. No clutch, you just press the starter, and away we are. The gauge cluster here, this, this thing only has six miles on it. Boy, I'm going to give it some of the roughest miles of its life. No tachometer, just a fuel gauge. We click through here, we have a clock, a trip meter, and that is it. And some, obviously, indicators here of what you got going on, because you got your blinkers, your high beam, nice loud horn. So right now I'm in neutral, but if you look at the shifter down here, you got a, you a sort of a up with your heel, and then down with your toes. So now I'm in first, but no clutch, I can simply ride away. And in theory, I can stay in first gear, or I just switch into second. I don't have to pull in a clutch or anything. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't sound quite as aggressive as the Grom. These are some of my raw first impressions here, so might be quiet for some sections just because I'm I'm thinking and I'm absorbing I'm taking it in we do have a rear brake and a front brake I guess I'll go down into first oof right, that's a little aggressive I don't know if I need to do that maybe I could have came to a stop in second brakes aren't as grabby as they are on the Grom or the monkey it's weird not being able to blip the throttle And away we go! So if I tack it out here in second, I'm doing 40 miles per hour already. And it kind of just, oh there we go, I'm hitting rev limiter. 
Going to third. Wow, okay. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna make this light. Suspension not quite as robust as on the monkey. Ooh, I got some, some rev blip there when I was on throttle for shifting. Wow, this is easy. <laughs> Looks like I am having some trouble getting up to 50, over 50 miles per hour in the wind. But it is easier to place yourself than uh, than on the monkey or the Grom, just with that really small front tire. So I'm gonna have to do some playing around here and see what can you get away with in terms of uh, riding around in which gears. I mean, when you, when are you supposed to shift this? Are you supposed to rev match? What are you supposed to do? It doesn't feel. I don't know, because I've, I've had a Honda Automatic before, and I just rode it, you know, drive it kind of like a normal car. Also takes a minute of thinking to remember, oh, in order to upshift, I gotta use my heel. Not something a normal motorcyclist is used to. All right, so it does help to get off the throttle, shift, and then get back on. That's fairly understandable. Uh, it wants to be upright more. Look at this, I can just freehand it so easily. It's a very low center of gravity, very easy. I'm gonna come to stop in fourth gear. Can I get going in fourth gear? No, not really. Third, difficult, second, doable, but there's got to be some sort of slipping going on in there. Okay, so you are supposed to operate it like a normal manual. You're not supposed to abuse it. Big surprise, Charlie. It is kind of nice to not have to think about clutching but the thing is, it's not a full automatic, like something like my CTX 700 that I had. So you do still have to think about shift, think about shifting. So it's almost kind of like, well, at that point, you might as well just have a clutch. Tires have a good feel to them. It feels snappier than the monkey, but again, you got to throw a little bit more body into turning it. I guess you can kind of just use the handlebars as well, but it, it it's very stable. It wants to stay upright. Also seems a little buzzier than the monkey in the ground. I'm feeling it more in the seat. I don't know if you're supposed to shift while you're uh, while you're moving or not. All right, now I'm in neutral. That's not what I want. You do have a nice bit of wind protection here down low, but obviously not really up top. The gauge cluster is a bit easier to see than on the monkey. So good amount of, you can really, really lean into it without getting any scraping, that's nice. You're not, not having to clutch, man. All right, so come to a stop. I think that's the best way to do it. You come to a stop in whatever gear you're riding in, and then you shift. Hmm. 
<laughs> all right, all right. Now, if you time it just right, you can push down on the shifter and then blip the throttle and you can rev match. So that's kind of cool. Oh, there we go. There's some scrapage. My GoPro decided to gaslight me and started with 48% battery and then died halfway through the ride. So uh, we're back a little bit, uh, a little bit abbreviated there, but uh, interesting, interesting little bike. I am... I expected it to be more approachable. I, I understand how if you were not familiar with driving anything manual before you operating a manual transmission, it might be easier to not have to deal with the clutch and just think about shifting. So it could be a nice progression into learning a manual transmission, but uh, it's almost so much like a scooter that why wouldn't you get a scooter? Then you're getting the, the storage aspect and scooters are just as fun. I don't really see the appeal of this interesting middle ground. I totally understand that the Super Cub uh, was revolutionary in uh, in the motorcycling world. It's getting so many people on bikes, and it is super cool looking. I do really appreciate the looks, but the suspension isn't as cushy as the Grom or the Monkey. It is a bit firmer, and the tires feel better to ride around the city than the Monkey's does. But without any storage, I don't know. I the proxy key is nice, but again, it's not that hard to put a key in. You still have to reach down and turn the thing on anyway. So, And I don't find the seat to be as comfortable as the monkey or the grom. You still have to... I mean, yeah, you can kind of lift your foot over like that, but you're, you're kind of falling off forward. So it's easier in some ways than, than some of the other small bikes out there, but an interesting, uh, an interesting beast. It's not as approachable as I expected it to be. But thank you all so much for watching. If you do love the way the Super Cub looks and you think it's for you, I think go out and ride one. That's the, that's the best thing I can say. I'm about to go experience the Trail 125, so we'll see if maybe this is, uh, transmission application in a more rugged uh, setup is, uh, is a cool way to go. But thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more on the bikes, check the link in the description, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.